Uh, very good evening to you and a warm welcome to the Turning Point here in Sri Lanka. The Turning Point is 6 to 6.30 p.m. discussion program. We discuss matters that affect the people of Sri Lanka. And that's every day. Uh, background is a home grown product designed and made in Sri Lanka, no less. He is a cyber security expert and a consultant on those matters and is a advocate of digitization and a consultant on that on those matters. Uh, he's passionate about digitization and uh, he has the necessary knowledge. All that knowledge, by the way. As I said, designed and made in Sri Lanka. He's a son of the soil in terms of uh, digitization and all matters, cybersecurity and so on. He's a visiting lecturer at the Bandaranaika Center and so on. And he is someone that I think you, the people, can be proud of. He's right here with us on Turning Point, Mr. Asele Waidilankara. Good evening. Thank you for being on the Turning Point. It's a pleasure to be see you in, on air. And we're delighted for that for us. Uh, thank you, Asela. Uh, I think it uh, is a measure of uh, the vision here at ITN uh, to try and bring balance uh, into media uh, because sometimes people say, the public complain that it's not quite like that. Some networks may complain too. But here's no better uh, example than this program. It's right here. So again, thank you to everyone at ITN for doing what they did. Um, and. Uh, Asela, now you, you are a cyber security expert and you've got years of uh, experience in this technology which is always progressive and so on. How can the people benefit by having digitization? Maybe you can tell us what is digitization anyway? And that's a very good question and I will start there yeah. because I think we as the public also sometimes misunderstand what we mean by digitization. Yeah. In terms of technology adoption, yeah. we have three types of uh, maturity. We call it digitization, digitalization and digital transformation. Digitization very quickly is the process of taking something that is done manually mm. into a digital format. Most of the time that is what we think is this leap and that is what is required at mm -hmm. in certain instances. Digitalization, the second step of maturity, is once you have done so, then you are looking at reorganizing your processes, you are becoming more efficient, you are thinking of different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. And there's a time and there's a maturity there. Then you come to the last step, which mm -hmm. is digital transformation. Mm -hmm. That is completely re-looking at everything. Mm -hmm. And because now you have achieved maturity in your digital, uh, you know, in environment and infrastructure, then how can we take this forward? Right. And that is where technologies like artificial intelligence mm. and all of that play a role. So what happens is most of the time people see the end in terms of digital transformation and what some other countries are doing. Mm. And then maybe we are not there yet in terms of digitization and yet we want to aspire for that. Mm. I think that is where the gap is and we need to be cognizant of that gap. So in Sri Lanka, for example, after this uh, economic collapse and when we started getting fuel, uh, we had the QR code. Everybody in the country became familiar with the QR code. Everyone was using the QR code to get their quota. But actually, uh, speaking with some officials at the CTC, they told us that the QR code helped the government to decide where to send the limited fuel vouchers to. There was no point sending five vouchers to um, uh, Pasikuda if 
Pasikuda only ever used one browser. So this, they, they were able to manage their resources. And, and, the, and our recovery so far is all about the management of the economy. No, it's not that we've suddenly gone to a different uh, level. We are managing. So is that an example of what digitization can do? That's an excellent example. And actually, more than the saving, which is very important, it gave data-driven decision making. Yeah. You could see from a granularity level of a fuel station, uh, and it was fantastic until uh, it was discontinued uh, for market forces reasons. You could see the, the granularity of a single fuel station's consumption. Yeah. Also, you could get the stats. I mean, I recall uh, at the time the minister used to tweet yeah. uh, the statistics. And it was a very nice statistic. You could see that when, when 25th of the month approached, you could see suddenly until that time there was a dip in the fuel consumption. Mm. And suddenly 25th, you could see an increase. Yeah. Why? Because that is when the uh, salary cycles come in. Uh -huh. And people's, so these are very valuable insights that you gain that are extremely valuable not only for that particular organization, but for policy planning. So, so people got used to this using the digital services. So the next step, back to the window, uh, would be to increase, send it out to the people in other ways. Uh, did we did we see an increase in the number of bank accounts being opened, online banking accounts, and so on? Actually, in public policy, we actually I teach public policy, yeah. uh, especially in terms of technology. We call this the Overton window yeah. of of uh, public policy, where there is a window of opportunity within a country, either created or in our situation because the the factors determine that. There was a s there was a uh, window of op opportunity. Mm. So because we recall there was some initial resistance, but certainly people started using it and got used to mm. it. In fact, mm. and there in lies what we should have done is leverage that adoption to other services. For example, that could have been used for your welfare benefits, could have been used for your cooperatives, mm. could have been used for digital payments using QR. Now. India, a neighbor, is an excellent example of how they've done it mm. very well. And mm. if you visited India very recently, and I have friends and colleagues who have, they tell me that even now the beggar on the streets, they use a QR code. Well, the buskers in London underground, they use it. Uh, but we'll come back to this after this short <laughs> break. This is the turning point for ITN Sri Lanka. Our guest is Asela Wadi Lankar. We'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? Some people will reject it 
You can ask our expert.
try to manage your mood with you. And actually, there are some types of people that they have done. They have gone down to granularity level of each drug role that is affected. And how, when in the matter of five years, what are the new drug roles you have to create? So it's true. And then, of course, the vocational phase starts with alliance. So that you are, you are going to show that the impact to drug control is going to be more. Thank you. And uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Take care and bless you all.